Hello everybody, it's Dr. Stuart Allen Swordlow. And Janet Diane Moria Swordlow. And this is the Expansions blog or podcast, depending on your opinion, for Thanksgiving week 2020. And I have some rants or explanations to go through before I get into the news. And basically, you know, the news has been the same for the last couple of weeks. There's really nothing too new that I haven't already posted. And all of you should be on the Expansions website, expansions.com, because I do post videos and information there on a daily basis that explains things in detail that is too much for me to go through here on this uh, broadcast. But first, before I go into anything, I just want to say thank you to all of you who sent prayers and information and even uh, herbs and things that helped me while I was ill for the last two weeks. I can't even say what I have because I did not go to a doctor, I did not go to a hospital, I did not get any tests. I only know that it was a very strange illness that left me extremely weak and lost a lot of weight. And um, I know that when we were all at the symposium at Sterling Heights, I knew something was wrong because when I looked at my phone for the very first time, it showed 5G. And where we live here, on the western side of the state, there is no 5G. We only have 4G. And so I always thought we were pretty safe. But when I saw the 5G on my phone, I knew kind of subconsciously, and even consciously, that there was going to be a problem. Because as I've told you for many months, the 5G combined with the AI creates the illnesses in the body. And that's exactly what happened after I got home. And not just myself, but several people who were at the symposium also had various different types of symptoms and uh, illnesses. And thankfully, most of them, I believe all of them, are also well. I'm, I'm pretty much well. Um, it's interesting, the process uh, that I went through. Um, for example, um, there's many different herbs, vitamins, supplements that you can get to try to help with uh, the various um, uh, issues that develop in the body. However, um, there's one product, thanks to Laura Eisenhower for telling me about it, is L-Sustine, or L-Sustine, however you say that. And that helps the lungs and it helps the rest of the body. And interestingly, when we went to get this L-Sustine, it's not available on the shelves anymore. Why? Because they found out it helps with this current scandemic and helps people. And so they pulled it off the shelves so that after January 1st, you can only get it via prescription. Well, actually, they didn't pull it. What they did is they're not reordering. So if you want to get it, you need to get it before January 1st because at that time... Yes, but if you can't hardly get it No, anywhere. you can't find it because the people who carry the supplements know that this, and so they... Or they can't get it. So in my opinion, this is a crime against humanity, that there is a substance that is very reasonably priced and that was available for years and years, and now it's been pulled so that the big pharma can make tons of money to, to make you well, when you could have just done it on your own all these months. So all the people who got sick and maybe even die, that's murder by the big pharma for pulling this from the shelves. And I think that should be investigated immediately. And I'm very surprised at the, even President Trump for allowing this to happen. He's still the president regardless of what's going on and he should be taking control of these things. He also promised that um, the, the HCQ and the other products would be available for free for all Americans. Well, I tried to get it and it's not possible to get it. So I don't know what's going on with the president. I don't know what's going on with the legal teams. All I know is that this is a crime against humanity. Now, we also found out uh, this morning that the FBI raided one of the doctors at uh, in Smock uh, for selling the Methylene Blue and related products. Now, Methylene Blue has been around for over 100 years. Why would they suddenly want people to stop taking it? Oh, maybe it helps people. That's what, this is crimes against humanity, regardless of the fraud in the election, regardless of all the other anarchy and crap going on. 
taking away cheap substances that have worked for a century that help people, this is a crime. And those people should pay for what they've done. And finally, my last rant before I go into the news. Um, I have been getting a lot of questions from people across the world asking about the AO scanner. And they do a scan, or I've done a scan for them, and they show it to their conventional doctor who has no clue how to read the reports and does not believe in energetic medicine. And they want to know, well, how can I prove to them to this? And they don't believe this. And they said, this is not possible. I don't care, okay? I am not here to explain and justify that the, that the device works perfectly well and the Russian scientists and space program have used it for decades with no problem. And I've used it on people in many continents, no problem. Well, we have accurate. a lot of testimony for people who have had issues in the short time we've had so, it that has been cleared up. If you're going to ask a Democrat to explain what a Republican says, and you're going to ask the wolf to talk about the chickens, you're going to get very bad answers. So if you're going to go to your conventional doctor and say, oh, look at the scan I got, what do you think? What do you think they're going to say about it? Please, don't bother me with stupid questions. I'm sorry, but these are stupid questions that you're asking me. On the air. Either you're going to use it or you're not going to use it. It works. It's perfect. It's excellent. I love it. And there's nothing else to say about it. You, want, you don't want to do it? Don't do it. You want to ask some conventional scientist? You're going to get a stupid answer. So don't ask me to explain their stupid answer. Okay? End of my rant. Now, to another ridiculous situation here with the, with the elections. And I'm sure that by now all of you have either seen or heard about the, um, the interviews with um, uh, Sidney Powell and Giuliani and, and the entire legal team for President Trump. And according to Sidney Powell, and she does not lie, and she only says things that she can back up with truthful evidence and documentation, she said that President Trump will end up with at least 80 million votes. She said, and the will of the people in this country was that Donald Trump win in a landslide. If we can get to the bottom of it, and I am determined to do that, I think we will find he has at least 80 million votes. And of course, she talked about the, um, the uh, Dominion uh, software that had completely changed and disrupted the election process. She says the algorithm, and, and, and what happened is on election night, several of the states that were using the Dominion software stopped counting the votes. Why? Because President Trump had such overwhelming counts that they needed time to stop them and reverse them to make it look like Biden won. And so she says the algorithm, algorithms wouldn't perform the functions they had originally performed that were set to perform. They couldn't make up the vote count. President Trump had gotten hundreds of thousands of more than they planned. So that's when they stopped the counting and came up with a way to backfill all the votes and destroy votes for President Trump while they fabricated votes for Biden. And she said, we're fixing, no, she is Southern. We're fixing to overturn the results of the election in multiple states. And President Trump won not just by hundreds of thousands of votes, but by millions of votes that were shifted by the software that was designed expressly for that purpose. She says, we have sworn witness testimony of why the software was, of why the software was, it was designed to rig elections. He was fully briefed on it. He saw it happen in other countries. It was exported internationally for profit by the people that are behind Smartmatic and Dominion. Which, by the way, the Dominion offices in Toronto, yes, it's a Canadian country. Shame on you, Canada. They all disappeared overnight. Hmm. Gee, if they were innocent, why would they vanish overnight? They did this on purpose. It was calculated, and they'd done it before, according to, to Sidney Powell. We have evidence from the 2016 California elections. She said, so much evidence, I feel like it's coming through a fire hose. So this is the woman that you want to pay attention to from now on because she's absolutely brilliant and a savior to the people who are right. 
She said they fabricated the votes for Biden. During the same interview, Powell also unloaded on CIA director Gina Haspel, claiming that she may have known about the flaws in the Dominion voting system. She said, it's really an insidious, corrupt system, and I can't tell you how livid I am at our government for not paying attention to complaints even brought by Democrats. No one in our government has paid any attention to it, which makes me wonder if the CIA has used it for its own benefit in different places. And why Gina Haspel is still there in the CIA is beyond my comprehension. She should be fired immediately. So... That's just a tip of the iceberg of what they said. Julie, oh, anyway, let the uh, mainstream media have it. Call them liars, which they are. And you're going to see in the next few days, between now and maybe Thanksgiving weekend, a lot of things happening. And what's also happening behind the scenes, which is not being reported. By Jade. <laughs> yes. They want to see the puppies. <coughs> You want mm -hmm. to eat your puppies? This is Jane. Yes, of course. This is very annoying for us to do it this way, but everybody wants to see the dogs and the cats and so on. So, did the U.S. raid European software company Sittel and seize their servers in Germany? Intelligence sources say yes, it happened. Uh, Representative Louis Gomart told uh, Newsmax that people on the ground in Germany report that Sittel, which hosted elections data improperly through Spain, was raided by a large U.S. Army force and their servers were seized in Frankfurt. And uh, CITL is a Barcelona-based company that provides electronic voting systems worldwide, many of which have proven vulnerable to electronic manipulation. CITL has or had Soros and Democrat Party connections. Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen Vulcan Company has invested $40 million in CITL. And from other sources, it says the U.S. government, once they determined that this Dominion server was involved in switching votes, then the intelligence community began a search for the server and discovered that the server was in Germany. In order to get access to that server and have it available for use in legal uh, manner, they had to have uh, State Department work in tandem with the Department of Justice. They had to request that the government of Germany cooperate in allowing the seizure of the server. And Angela knows that she's in deep doo-doo, and so she must have had allowed this to happen. Now, by getting a hold of the server, they now are going to have the direct evidence of when they were instructed to stop counting. They will also discover who gave the direction to stop counting and who initiated the algorithm that started switching votes. The CIA was completely excluded from this operation because they're corrupt, just like most of the FBI. So, here's a question for all of you during all of this. Where's Nancy Pants? Where's Upchuck Schemer? Where's Adam Shifty? Where's HRC, Obama, the Gates? They seem to have fallen off the earth. Well, Obama, you know, is pushing his new book now. That's the big thing. Yeah, he could push it all the way to Cuba. You know, they want the U.S. to be a communist country. No problem. They're going to go to a communist country prison, Cuba, and they could spend the rest of their life there. And they could have a communist life, just like they wanted here. Now, speaking of another, I don't even want to say the word, Governor Gavin Newsom, I always say Newsom, because he is actually he's old scum, apologized Monday for visiting a Napa Valley restaurant with people from other households saying his behavior contradicted the spirit of the safety guidelines and precautions he had asked Californians to adhere to during this COVID-19 scamdemic. And he said, and I'm sure he had little tears in his eyes, I want to apologize to you because I need to preach and practice, not just preach and not practice, Gee, I wonder who wrote that for him. And I've done my best to do that. No, you didn't. That's why he closed down every winery but his own. Yeah, right. <laughs> he says, we're all human. I don't know if he is. And we sh fall short sometimes. The governor discussed his own behavior on the same day that he announced the reversal of his reopening plans and ordered 28 counties to return to the purple tier, which means 94% of Californians will be under the state's most restrictive guidelines as of this Tuesday. The governor has been criticized in recent days following news of his attendance at the dinner party and that his children are back in school 
while millions of California school children and their families juggle distance learning with full-time jobs. Now, here's a very good mayor, one good mayor. San Diego Mayor Kevin Falconer, the governor's most prominent GOP critic who has been urged by some of his party to challenge New Scum in 2022, if he lasts that long, condemned the governor in a tweet last week suggesting that he has been living a different life during the pandemic than his constituents. Jeez, how strange. He, his kids can learn in person, but yours can't. He can celebrate birthday parties, but you can't. He can dine on a $350 meal at one of California's fanciest restaurants during the worst recession in generations, but you definitely can't. Can you, can you believe this? I can't. Newscom and his wife, Jennifer Sybil Newscom, attended a birthday party for his political advisor, Jason Kinney, a registered lobbyist at the Michelin-starred French Laundry Restaurant in Yonkville on November 6th first reported by the San Francisco Chronicle. Newsom's opponents cast him as a wealthy businessman out of touch with everyday Californians. And uh, Newsom also benefits from his long-standing business and personal ties to the family of the late oil tycoon J. Paul Getty. His late father, William A. Newsom III, was once the administrator of the Getty Trusts. The governor and his family live in a $3.7 million six-bedroom home in Fair Oaks near the banks of the American River. Hmm. It would be so nice if the American River overflowed and flooded his $3.7 million house. Well, I remember he's a nephew of uh, Pelosi. Yes, and Nancy Pants is probably hiding somewhere getting her hair done. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you people, when this is over, all of these people are going to Cuba and not for vacation. And I have recently seen information of flight paths, of private jets, and even hospital jets, flying to Washington, D.C., picking up somebody, and flying to Cuba. There's also an overflow operation in Honduras, which most people don't know, that there's also a Gitmo-like prison in Honduras, and there are flights going to there as well. So something's going on behind the scenes. I believe people are being arrested, and there are troops that have been transported from North Carolina and other states to Gitmo. Uh, why would they be doing that now right before the holidays? So something's going on, people. And of course, I always give you a weather update, uh, this time from Pakistan. Now, you don't think of Pakistan as being cold and snowy. Okay, mountains they have Pakistan. mountains, but people don't live, many people live up there. But they were gripped by extreme cold weather and heavy snowfall over this last weekend. Up to three feet, or one meter of snow, uh, was, uh, was uh, reported. And the Pakistan Meteorological Department said there was thunder snow in Islamabad, which is a major low-level altitude city. And also in other places like Kashmir and so on, the Khyber Pass. So snow is falling, people, at this moment, simultaneously on all seven continents, even continents that are entering into summer. There is snow falling in every continent. Fascinating. So I want to remind people, again, because I, I get a kick out of the show that's being put on for you with uh, Biden, because you know they're talking to this and... They're talking about him being the president-elect. And I told you last week, December 8th, 2020, is the deadline for resolving election disputes. All state recounts and court contests over the presidential election results must be completed by December 8th. So we have no president-elect. December 14th is when the electors meet. They cast their, they meet in each state. They cast their ballots for president and vice president. They sign it and then they send it. One goes to the to the president of the U.S. Senate, Mike Pence, who's the vice president of the U.S., and this is the copy that is officially counted later. Then other copies go to the state secretary of state, the National Archives and Records Administration, and the presiding judge in the district where the electors meet as a backup copy to replace the official copy sent to the president of the Senate if it's lost or destroyed. December 23rd is the deadline for the receipt of ballots. January 6, 2021 is the counting of electoral ballots. 
where the U.S. Congress meets in joint session to actually count the ballots, and it is not until January 6th that we actually have a president-elect. So keep that in mind. I think it'll happen way before that. Well, these, these are the official dates, regardless of what happens with any lawsuits. Now, this story came to my attention, very interesting. Mexico journalist exposes Joe Biden's human trafficking compact. Wow. Oscar, known as El Blue Ramirez, is a Mexican journalist based in Tijuana. He gave a, an excellent breakdown of the UN compact that Joe Biden and Barack Obama signed. And that is the compact that led to a massive influx of child trafficking and over 20,000 children in cages during the Obama administration. Mm -hmm. Now, El Blue gives a first-hand witness account to what they call the Coyote Network of organized crime and human trafficking of children. El Blue describes a massive black market industry that Obama and Biden created by signing the UN Global Compact of Open Borders. This created fake families as a result of the poorly designed text with loopholes wide enough to build concentration camps within. And guess what? El Blue says that Donald Trump administration rescued 72,000 trafficked children because of their determination to actually establish biological ties to the so-called parent, because these false parents were paid coyotes for the right. use of the child. Right. Right. El Blue also says that Antifa is involved in the trafficking syndicate. Of course they are. Trump's effective shutdown of the global human trafficking has crushed the cash cow of international trafficking. Coyotes use enslaved children, or they lose the, these enslaved children because the DNA tests verify the parents, so they send them back to deep in South America where their parents are, but guess what? The same kids are used over and over again because some are sold or supposedly rented to these coyotes. So they loop back into Mexico and even when they get them across the border, then the children are not safe because they're picked up again by the coyotes because the illegals disappear into the U.S. population. They take them back and they put them with another family and they keep sending them around the loop. Mm -hmm. And the children are afraid because they're tortured and all sorts of horrible things happen to them so they won't speak up. So the Trump administration has rescued 72,000 trafficked children. That's just from Mexico. Just from the Mex well, from South America. And the compact was allowed by the Obama-Biden administration. They were evil and they still are evil. They are still evil. And isn't it interesting that Mexico did not congratulate? No, they did not. Biden. And neither did Russia. No. And neither did many other countries in the world that know what's going on. But look who did congratulate Biden. That is who is evil. Yes. Now, I want to also address the coronavirus pandemic because of more interesting information. Every time mm -hmm. I think I've heard it all, something else happens. <coughs> Excuse me. So, but before I address the biggest thing, I want to tell you about the case count. <coughs> now, this particular article came to me from Calgary, Canada, because a student up there tested positive. And so they quarantined the entire class. They said everybody has to go home, everybody has to stay away from school for 30 or for 14 days. <coughs> there were 30 students in the class. What? I can't help it, Cal, because I've got a tickle in my throat. And I'll have to drink a water in a minute if it doesn't stop. So anyway, so there were 30 students in the class. Because 30 students were in the class, they counted them as 30 new cases, even though only one had actually had a test for positive. So keeping that in mind, this next article would like blow you away. A former chief science officer for the pharmaceutical giant Pfizer asserts that false positive results from inherently unreliable COVID tests are being used to manufacture a second wave based on new cases. This paper he wrote was actually in September, and of course we're entering into November. Dr. Mike Yaden, a former vice president and chief science officer for Pfizer for 16 years, says that half or even almost all of tests for COVID are false positive. He said, we are basing a government policy, an economic policy, a civil liberties policy in terms of, oh, he was asked, are we basing a government policy, an economic policy, a civil liberties policy in terms of limiting people to six people in a meeting, all based on what may well be completely fake 
data on this coronavirus? And Dr. Yadin answered with a simple yes. And even more significantly, even if all positives were to be correct, Dr. Yadin said that given the shape of all important indicators in a worldwide pandemic, such as hospitalizations, ICU utilization, and deaths, he says the pandemic is fundamentally over. And he said in this interview, were it not for the test data that you get from the television all the time, you would rightly conclude that the pandemic was over as nothing much has happened. People go to the hospital as we move into the autumn flu season. There is no science to suggest a second wave should happen. The rate of COVID-19 has been upgraded since May to 99.8% of infections, which comes close to the ordinary flu with a survival rate of 99.9%. And although COVID can have serious after effects, so can flu or any other respiratory illness. Now the present survival rate is far higher than the initial survival rate cited by Anthony Fauci, who and he said it was 94% or 20 to 30 times t- deadlier. He needs to be arrested immediately. The infection fatality rate, which they call the IFR value, which is accepted by Yaden and those who worked with him in his paper that he produced, is 0.26%. The survival rate of a disease is 100% minus the IFR. And he pointed out that the novel COVID-19 contagion is novel because it's a new type of coronavirus and there are presently four types of coronavirus which circulate freely throughout the population which are linked to the common cold. And that's why on the Lysol can it said for years it will kill the coronavirus. And people are bringing that up. I also like the word novel because a novel is fake. It's fiction. Uh, And he, He and his authors wrote there are at least four well-characterized family members which are endemic and cause some of the common colds we experience, especially in winter. And they all have striking sequence similarity to the new coronavirus. They say, he and his scientists argue, that much of the population already has, if not antibiotics to COVID, some level of T-cell immunity from exposure to other related coronaviruses. And of the test that's currently being given, called the PCR test, Uh, The authors write that more than half of the positives are likely to be false, and potentially all of them. The scientists explain that the PCR test actually measures only the presence of partial RNA sequences present in the intact virus. This means, listen carefully, this means what they're measuring, it could be a piece of dead virus, which cannot make the subject sick, cannot be transmitted, and cannot make anyone else sick. He says the case that any second wave of COVID in any government case for lockdowns, given the well-known principles of epidemiology, will be entirely manufactured. Now, in Boston, a lab totally suspended doing coronavirus testing after 400 false positives were discovered. And in the a University of Oxford professor, who is the director of Oxford Center for Evidence-Based Medicine, wrote in July how many COVID diagnoses are false positive. And going off of the current practices, COVID-19 might never be shown to disappear because of their using false data. They're right. saying it's manufactured. So, of course, then this article refers to, a, you will remember, President of Tanzania who sent samples from a goat, a sheep, and a papa to a COVID testing lab, and they all came back COVID. In August, the Swedish government discovered 3,700 false COVID positive tests. And these were made by China's BGI Genomics. Oh, how, how and guess what? They were approved in March by the FDA for use in the U.S. I'm telling you, they should build a fence around China for the next 3,000 years. It keeps getting increasingly more interesting as this article goes along because Yaden and his scientist colleagues single out one professor, Professor Neil Ferguson, for his role in the pandemic. Apparently, Ferguson taught at the Imperial College while Yaden was affiliated there. And Ferguson's computer model provided the rationale for all governments to launch these draconian orders, which turned free societies into virtual prisons overnight over what is now estimated by the CDC to be a 99.8% survival rate. Dr. Yaden said that no serious sciences gives any validity to Ferguson's model. It's important that you know most scientists don't accept 
The Ferguson's model was even faintly right, but the government is still wedded to it. Ferguson's model is the assumptions of which all worldwide lockdowns are based on. It was Ferguson's model which held that mitigation measures were necessary, meaning social distancing, business closures, etc., to prevent over 2.2 million people dying from COVID in the U.S., which of course never happened. Now, Sweden, Ferguson predicted, Sweden would pay a terrible price for no lockdown with 40,000 COVID deaths by May 1st and 100,000 by June. Well, guess what? Sweden's death count is under 6,000. And the Swedish government says <clears throat> this is because it, it coincides to a mild flu season. And Sweden has a lower death rate per capita th to the U.S., which it achieved without the terrific economic damage still going on in the U.S. That's right. Sweden never closed bars, restaurants, sports, schools, or movie theaters. They never ordered people to wear masks. And Dr. Yaden speaks bitterly of the lives lost as a result of lockdown policies and of the savable countless lives which we further lost from important surgeries and other health care that people have deferred should more lockdowns be imposed. Yaden, it says, is a successful entrepreneur, the founder of a biotech company which was acquired by Novartis, which is another pharmaceutical giant, and his unit at Pfizer was the Asthma and Respiratory Research Unit. Now, in Germany, an organization of 500 German doctors and scientists who have formed say that the government response to COVID has been out of proportion to the severity of the disease. And of course, in New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo's administration is under federal investigation Good. for all but signing the death warrants for thousands of nursing home elderly. He is with, Satan's son. When the state sent COVID patients into the nursing homes over the objections of helpless nursing home executives and staffs, they didn't want them. They had to take them. Now, back to our Professor Neil Ferguson. Guess who funded him? Bill Gates Foundation. And the Belgians have filed a lawsuit against Professor Neil Ferguson and the Gates Foundation. Good. Now, <clears throat> the National Review reports that Ferguson is viewed among scientists as having been wrong for most of his entire career. <laughs> what the hell is he doing? Ferguson, I'm going to tell you, it gets very interesting. Ferguson was behind the disputed research that sparked the mass culling of 11 million sheep and cattle during the 2001 outbreak of foot and mouth disease. And I remember that. They killed off sheep, they killed off cattle, and then they also killed off the animals, the deer and all that. Ferguson's nicknames in the science community have been reported to be Master of Disaster and Professor Lockdown. Now, guess what? Significant funding for Professor Lockdown just last March, about the same time, that he published his famously wrong map came from none other than the Bill and Man Linda Gates Foundation. This where is where the, are they? The very same foundation which has stated that the world vaccination is its number one priority. Now, I want to see them inject it the, first. The Gates Foundation says it's to, they want to prepare for a world with universal vaccinations. Gates said right. that himself mm -hmm. in April to Fox News host Chris Wallace. In a research funding database maintained by the UK Research and Innovation website, it is seen that Gates made donations of nearly eight million to research, led by Neil Ferguson in March and April of 2020, to the MRC Center for Global Infectious Disease Analysis, based at the Imperial College, which guess what? Ferguson co-founded in 2008. Eight million dollars just in March and April, and it continues on that the Center for Global Infectious Disease is the leading body advising national governments on pathogen outbreaks. Isn't that interesting? It gets tens of millions of dollars in annual funding from the Bill and Manlinda Gates Foundation. Gates, in a separate unrelated grant, gave $79 million to the Imperial College in March 2020. This makes nearly $100 million to Ferguson or his institution in the months of March and April. The lockdowns would not have been possible without his Ferguson's academic underpinnings for the government's decide. So they paid him. He made this this uh, report that everybody's using to lock everybody down, and the report was false. But this report was funded. Hundred so why, million. Why are they still walking around? That's right. And guess what? It includes Dr. Anthony Fauci Ooh, of the U.S. Shock. Coronavirus Task Force. That's a shock. Isn't that a shock? I don't think little Anthony would be so horrible. Now Newsweek reported that Fauci 
gave seven million to the Wuhan lab in China yes. for the bat coronas research that was so dangerous it was banned in the U.S. So this is while he was the director of National Institute for Why Allergy. Why isn't he arrested? I agree with you. Of an infectious diseases. What are you ba doing, Trump? Fauci and Gates have had a close relationship going back years. And according to a Gates Foundation press release, Fauci was tapped by Gates to help launch the Gates project called, guess what, the Decade of Vaccines. And the prestigious New England Journal of Medicine, NEJM, there's only two, well, the two of the most influential medical publications in the world, the New England Journal of Medicine and The Lancet, ran a piece, an article, which urged a future of compulsory adult vaccinations. Now, Gates, who is a successful businessman, but he is a college dropout, dropout, he holds no medical credentials, he's never published a scientific paper, he has a special relationship with the New England Journal of Medicine, which allows him to publish in its pages and deliver keynote, co uh, uh, keynote um, addresses at its conferences. So and why would called, that be? It's because I give you a billion dollars and you let me do whatever I want. And Gates is also the funder of a company called Profusa, which along with the U.S. Department of Defense's DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, is developing a under-the-skin biosensor, which helps trackers keep up by detecting flu-like infections even before their symptoms begin to show. So Gates are also funding the U.S. Department of Defense, DARPA. So Gates' fingers everywhere. Someone needs to cut his fingers off. Research funding for Profusa Biochip by the Gates Foundation once in, uh, was happened between 20 and 26, 2012 and 2016 yes, at a University of California in San Francisco. And guess what? Once the chip is implanted, it fuses <laughs> with, li with living <laughs> tissue and blood, blood vessels. Stop that. Yet. I can speak Russian too. Yet. Once implanted, the chip is permanent, fusing with living tissue and blood vessels. The d data is relayed to a smartphone for an encrypted personal record and historical tracking, and then it is shared via what they call digital networks with healthcare providers, once you have this in you. DARPA, of course, is the top secret exotic weapons research arm of the U.S. military, run by generals that are beholden to the military-industrial complex. DARPA is engaged in biochemical weapons research, many of which would be outlawed by the Geneva Convention. And Michael Goldblatt, who is the former head of DARPA's Defense Sciences, says, My measure of success is that the International Olympic Committee bans everything we do. This is funded by Gates. Microsoft envisions users of this biochip being rewarded for allowing their bodies to be monitored in this way, by paying them cryptocurrency for performing specific tasks, which means if one can be rewarded for good behavior, can you be punished? Adam Kuyper, senior editor of the New Atlantis, writes that nanotechnology could theoretically be used to make mind control systems invisible and mobile eavesdropping devices or unimaginably horrific tools of torture. Guess what already is there? That one I'll tell you publicly. Rabbi David Smith of New York says that we are confronted with a slide into fascism based on purported concern for health, which he says was exactly the Nazi playbook before the total consolidation of power by Hitler. Once that's accomplished, the Nazis had no further need of a pretext, and Rabbi Smith argues it's time to stop it. Yes, a long time ago. He said the key to all of this is mandatory vaccination, the pretext for unfettered access to each individual's bloodstream and body tissue. He said the key is perpetuating of the COVID crisis, no matter what the actual data says, which we just said, it's all based on falsehood, and I have funded a, by Gates. And you remember a few weeks ago, I told you what China and Taiwan yes. are up to as far as getting that. Well, I just had another report from that same whistleblower yeah. just two days ago who told me, you in the UK, 500,000 of your DNA samples are now part of his project. 500,000 of you in the UK are now part of the project for China and Taiwan. And guess what Rabbi Smith says? He wants it to people to note that it was credentialed medical doctors who made the selections at the Nazi death camps of who would live and who would die. And in India... These are the same people who came here. Yes. In India, a committee of investigation found that thousands of girls whose families were illiterate 
were maimed by, back, by Gates vaccine trials without the informed consent of the children or their families. Of course, the children can't give it. But neither the girls nor their families could read or write, and they used their thumbprints as signatures, giving consent to the trials that they did not understand. And this is in violation established at the Nuremberg trials, following the trial of the Nazi doctor Joseph Mengele, that no experiments could be conducted on a person without their fully informed consent, and seven of those 23 defendants for illegal experiments were sentenced to death. And this article says Gates could be prosecuted on these grounds alone I hope so. by any duly sworn prosecutor in any nation that is signatory to the Geneva Conventions. What this is important. For? Rabbi Smith tells us this is the plan and you can stop it. And then he quotes the Bible, which I'm going to. This is Ephesians six twelve, which says, we, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And then he goes on, Ephesians 6.14, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about you with truth, and Long having on having on the breastplate of righteousness. Mm -hmm. So, horrible things happening out there. And all based on falsehood. So all of you who are afraid, read these articles, the links are going to be posted here. And you share these with people who are afraid, and you inform your neighbors of what's going on out there, and that these whole lockdowns are Silence about. Silence is what destroyed all the people in Europe in World War II. Yes. Silence. And that's what's happening. People are afraid. There's no reason to be afraid. They're mind controlling you. Now, in New Mexico, continuing along, the state estimates that more than 12,000 students stopped attending class during the pandemic. This is only in New Mexico. What about the rest? And what happened to these students? Where are they? We don't know. In Oregon, our Thanksgiving holiday here in the U.S. is coming up. And in Oregon, the uh, Governor Kate Brown ordered a two-week statewide freeze on businesses and gatherings which were limited to six people. Well, guess what? Tootie Smith, who's the incoming chairwoman of Clackamas County Board of, Clackamas County, Board of County Commissioners, slammed Governor Kate Brown for the lockdown rules, and she said... My family will celebrate Thanksgiving with as many family and friends Good. as I can find. Good. Governor Brown is wrong to state otherwise. That's right. You, and in California, in Washington State, all these states that have ridiculous, moronic rules, even here in Michigan, don't do it. Have your Thanksgiving, because you know what? You will have a lot to be thankful for at this time. And the Smith even said, I believe my citizens can make their own informed decisions and maintain their personal rights. If yep. Newscom can have a three hundred fifty dollar freaking dinner with all these people that you know that are not in his family with no mask and sitting right next to each other, so can you? Yeah, what's the problem there? I don't say anything, do you? No, he's fine. Yep. Looks like he's fine. And here in Michigan, lots of things going on because, um, as we have kind of stated, Whit Whitmer. Gave us, gave us a bunch of new rules, locking mm. us down over the Thanksgiving holiday. And guess what? There's a picture of her on the internet with her arm around one of the Dominion representatives. She, Whitmer, is guilty of treason and should be arrested immediately. So the White House Corona Advisor, as a result of this, Dr. Scott Atlas, tweeted the only to it, about the response to the new restrictions in Michigan, tweeted, the only way this stops is if people rise up, you get what you accept. And Whitmer then called his statement incredibly reckless oh. as coronavirus infections, which we just told you that about. she made up. Yeah, they supposedly rise. So her new order bans, uh, yeah, bans and closure measures began this last week for indoor dining, in-person schooling, high school athletics, movie theaters, bowling alleys, and casinos are closed down. And there's now going to last through December 8th. And guess what? You'll probably do it again in time for Christmas. Well, that's I hope by it. then things are settled and she is out the door. So Scott Atlas wrote back, uh, again, the only way that this stops, if people rise up, you get what you accept. Freedom matters. Step up. And then he said, after that, I never was talking about violence. People vote. People peacefully protest. Never would I endorse or incite violence. Never. So, then Whitmer goes on to say, <laughs> if everyone does their part, we will see a benefit in the next few weeks. Yeah, that's what she said six months ago. If people are lax or have Thanksgiving events where they, continue, where they contribute to spread, our numbers will not change significantly and can continue on this terrible trajectory ah, that we've been on. I wonder where she's having Thanksgiving. And then, Could it be Traverse City where yeah, she opened everything up? Possibly, where they show her all the time. 
She said she would not be bullied when responding to the comments. Hmm. And then she goes on to say, She's a bully. We know that the White House likes, likes to single us out here in Michigan, me in particular. Yeah, because you're a bitch. I'm not going to be bullied into not following reputable scientists and medical professionals. Yeah, reputable George Soros Fauci scientists. Well, I just told you the science that was based on this Neil Ferguson. There is the science which was paid for by Gates. That's yeah. what they're following. That's, that's like the wolf say, only follow wolf scientists. All the chickens must follow the wolf scientists. Now, in light of this, Republican State Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky said in a statement... Uh, Shirky's a jerky. Not really. No, because he said he wanted to certify the election. Well, he's going, you're going to listen why he's not. So anyway, uh, Republican State Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky said that the Republicans were disappointed that Governor Whitmer chose to go it alone. So they're going to impeach Whitmer. Listen, the only reason he changed his tune is because Trump sat them down and told them which way the cow chooses cut. That could be. And then he changed his tune, but he was a traitor. Well, here we are. So Michigan State Representative Matt Maddock, Republican, said that he and a growing list of Michigan legislators will work to impeach her. And they have decided that she's crossed the line and will be calling for impeach Whitmer hearings. The list of violations is long and the call is overdue. Maddock listed all the reasons he believed that she deserved to be removed from office, including ignoring court orders, violating her constitutional rights, completely ignoring due process and the legislature, right. and weaponizing contract tracing databases to aid Democrat campaigns. Which lined her pockets, by the way. And according to respected Michigan political analyst Bill Ballinger, this is the first time in history a Michigan governor faces an impeachment vote. He says we must move quickly yes. to hold the vote, yes. initiate impeachment hearings, include subpoenas as well as sworn testimony, and put Gretchen Whitmer on trial in the Senate. Oh, thank God. He says justice must be served, listen to this one, for among other things, every family business she's destroyed. And murdered people. For the record amount of drug overdoses and suicides her lockdowns have caused, for her horrendous mismanagement of the unemployment system, for repeatedly violating her own orders, for crony contact tracing contracts to her Democrat friends, for robbing our students out of vital school experiences, and for turning our nursing homes into death camps. She's a murderer. She's a serial killer. So thank God somebody's doing something. She's a serial killer, and death is too good for her. And with thousands of Michigan bars and restaurants facing this last three-week closure beginning last week, the Michigan Restaurant and Lodging Association, called the MRLA, along with plaintiffs Heirloom Hospitality Group and HIH Inc. doing business as suburban inns, has filed a lawsuit against Robert Gordon in his official capacity as the Michigan Director of Health and Human Services, seeking an emergency preliminary injunction to resume mm -hmm. on-premise mm -hmm. indoor food and beverage consumption. Mm -hmm. Now, again, she was overturned by the by the uh, Supreme Court of Michigan, yes, and she couldn't right. do things, so now she's using, using the Michigan Department of Health and Human I'm Services you, I am so disgusted. I am disgusted with Michigan. Seriously, I consider leaving here. The Michigan Restaurant and Lodging Association has filed in federal court for injunctive relief from the order issued on November 15th by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Excuse me. She's the Wicked Witch of the North. We have taken this action only after careful deliberation and as the last available option to prevent the outright devastation of restaurant operators and their hundreds of thousands of employees hey, across the state. It's too late. They're out of business. They're gone. We made several good faith efforts in advance of the public release of the order issued November 15th to reach a compromise with the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services that would have supported the goal of minimizing risk while still allowing for the continued operation of dining rooms. She turned Michigan into North Korea. Mm -hmm. The COVID-19 outbreak investigation data tracked by the Michigan Department of Human Health and Services attributes only 4.3% of all outbreaks here in Michigan to restaurants. There are millions of Michiganders that are served in restaurants every day and only a total of eight Eight investigations involving a restaurant patron. Right. 250,000 employees are likely to be laid off from employee from restaurants already are. over the holiday season. Well, there's some that you're, they I can mean, still do. Things closed. Well, they can still do out, you know, takeout. So that for that reason, it's not. But it says that right now, approximately 2,000 restaurants have 
close their doors permanently, and 6,000 more Very will sad. permanently sad. close by spring if this continues. And, what? and what? not only that, you want to remember the supply tra chain. We have the 250,000 employees laid off over the holidays. We have the supply chain. It's going to unpack everything here in Michigan. So yes, please sign the petition to impeach, impeach. and execute. Impeach and execute. And in Washington State, gubernatorial candidate Lauren Culp's campaign manager, Christopher Gurgeon, claims voter fraud, vowing to file lawsuits over the results of their election. He said there's rampant fraud in Washington State's election systems. He has a lot of evidence. There will be lawsuits. And we are going to come after the people who have facilitated this because they're cheating the, they're cheating the people. And he's had conversation with President Trump's attorney. And Washington State Culp's campaign alleges that it has a lot of evidence of people receiving ballots who are not citizens, as well as evidence that the, <laughs> de the dead people yeah, voted. 10,000 dead people voted in Michigan, but there's no fraud. And 138,000 ballots appeared at 4 o'clock in the morning, eight hours after the polls closed. A 100% for Biden, a statistical impossibility. But there's no fraud. And speaking of things that people are doing that is wrong, there, here's a, a story about human genes being inserted into monkey brains, causing them to expand in Planet of the Apes style type Maybe that's what they did experiment. To that could be. Maybe she was a monkey. And scientists are creating a grow your own steak kit using oh, I saw human cells and blood, Yuck. but say it's not technically cannibalism. Yes, yes it technically is. The meat called Orobus, uh, Oro, how do you say that? Ouroboros? Yeah, Ouroboros. Ouroboros steaks after the snake that eats itself. They culture human cells in growth serum made from discarded I human blood. And they were nominated for a 2020 Beasley Design of the Year. Now the kits are not for sale, but they want to bring attention to ethical issues with lab-grown meat. And what they're saying is that you can get a swab inside your own cheek and grow your own meat. Oh my God. Isn't that disgusting? But how? These people should be executed for treason and crimes against humanity. These are worse than Nazis. They're worse. saying right now there's no lab-grown meat for sale in any country. That they but, tell you. That's right. The market is currently estimated at 155 million British pounds. With expected, by, by who? Who's going to buy it? Expected to reach 400... Stupid people. Brainwashed people. Expected to reach 431 million pounds in the next five years. So they're already projecting a market, which means these are things... I want to know what going. moron is going to do that. Oh, I'll start my cheek and we'll have dinner tonight. A lot of morons out there. Unfortunately, please get our, our packages. Say no to mind control. We have so many books that will help you. So you can stand up for yourself. I'll tell and, you what. I and just... you must... Those two things, those articles I read you about the false science that is being quoted and funded by the Man, Linda, and Bill Gates Foundation. You where must the hell spread are those where articles. They are. Where are they? They're we hiding. Don't know. They're well, hiding. They're claiming that because of what happened in India that they were actually killed in India. And well, I those believe that. Because that, that are masquerading Those are not the that, same people. They are Just not. like that, that, the Zuckerberg, that is not the same one that was from 10 years ago. No way. And you know what? The people up there in, uh, who are in the know, they know those are not the same and people. And how can Biden, a couple of years ago, or his whole life, had ice blue eyes, and now his eyes are black? How did that happen? So who are all these people They're out there They're not the same people. And why isn't President Trump exposing these people that are That's what there. I want to know, President Trump, because you know what? It's freaking enough already. You want to be president again? Do something now. No, we don't want to be brainwashed from one side to go to the other. You know what? I'd rather have the other side than what they are trying to impose on us. No, all of it is, like I said... You but he has to do something. He's still a president. He can stop this right to F now. Yeah, so what you need to do is get out of the mental prison of your mind. Say no to mind control. And I'm just, I have no faith in humanity whatsoever anymore. So, so people are morons and they're stupid. We have a lot of books to help you. Get a membership, expansions.com, less than a dollar a day. And like I said, do your best to educate your fellow people in the best way that you can because it's ridiculous what's out I'll tell you what made me better anger burned everything out of me. Yeah. Anyway, you talked about the books. Well, yeah, not. well whatever. New webinars coming up in January. Well, we still have one series left in December right, that for you three can sign. Weeks. Three weeks you can and sign. And then I, I believe that we will have an Ecuador 
webinar on December 3rd. Which I'll confirm means that. So. English Spanish. Yes. English Spanish. Um, let's see. Um, there will be changes for expansions after January. Which we've been talking January 1st. about. January 1st. Um, I know that right now I'm in process with many huge adventures in Africa. In 2021, please God, everything is going to be open and taken care of and this insanity will be ended. And if so, which I pray it will be, and I believe so, in 2021, I will be spending more time in places like Texas, Florida, Germany, Switzerland, Nigeria, Congo, Puerto Rico, and Bahamas. Where will you be? I'll probably just have to stay here and run things like normal. Okay. Now you'll probably be in Italy and Iceland and those places. Who knows where. We'll mm -hmm. be in the world. But expansions is growing and changing. We're changing because you know what? I'm sorry. I had enough of the stupidity right. from the stupid public who ask ridiculous questions and do stupid things and believe stupid things. I had enough. So enough. We, we turned out this last year a ton of new books. Hopefully you have those in your libraries. Um, my Heights of Wealth, thank God, is finally being laid out. That's the last in my Heights series. I don't I have my Heights of Spirituality book here. But there's five in this series. They're popping off the shelves, so be sure you get yours if you have it. My Heights so Heights of Wealth, probably sometime the way it's going, maybe around the first of the year. Then we're going to have a couple books based on the classes we're going to be doing in January. So well, may, January through April. Yes, and then the, the books that we've kind of had in the pipeline all these years, most of them anyway, will be out to you as we move on into other things. Yes, and I'm sorry, I'm just not going to be dealing with the public Are you much. sorry? I am sorry. You know why I'm sorry? Because I really like helping people, but people are so, I don't know, the way, I'm, yes, it's insulting, but they're stupid. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely with the things that they believe, and they go like this, and then they ask me stupid questions, like, you know what? I'm done. Well, done. you know what? They're lazy. I'm sorry. No, don't be lazy. No, they're stupid, and Satan has control of them, and I don't want any part of it. Yeah. So, anyway, we are moving along. So, do what you can, like we told you. Support us through our, us and our research, Expansions.com, and support yourself through your own research, Expansions.com, and... Share uh, what you know. And our videos will be on, uh, they are on our yes. website and they're on Vimeo. So you can always find us there. Yeah, they're free. So you can watch our videos there. So be sure you tell people, but pass the podcast around because we never know how long we'll be up. Yes, because the world is insane and run by Satanists. Here in the U.S., for those of you who celebrate Thanksgiving, we hope you do have a happy yes. and joyous time with yes. your family, friends, and relatives. Don't pay attention to the rules and regulations because they're ridiculous. And we pray that you will also have a happy, for the, whatever holidays you celebrate during the month of December, that that also goes well for you and your family. As well. mm -hmm. And for God's sake, stay away from 5G. Yeah. And read, get your books, get your memberships. Take care of yourself. Stay self-educated. It's the best thing you can do. Well, see you after Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.